We are here at the ASPO. It's a gathering of every year that they come from all over the world to talk about peak oil, its impact on the United States and the world. When did you become a peak oil believer and convinced that this is a serious issue? Oh, several years ago, I remember, I think it was uh, 05 that I spoke to the ASPO convention out in Denver, Colorado. And I already been for several years very much concerned about the uh, obvious reality that oil is finite. One day it will run out. Uh, you know, when I was teaching uh, uh, science, uh, I kept asking myself that question. I knew that it would happen. When will it happen? So I kept looking and looking, and then it finally became clear to me, gee, I think we're there. And so I was probably the earliest one in the Congress that was saying that, gee, you know, we really need to be paying attention to this. We are going to shortly reach our maximum ability to produce oil. After that, it will be a plateau, and then the, no matter how hard we try, there will ultimately be less and less at higher and higher cost. That just is an absolute reality when you recognize that oil is finite. The only question is, when will that happen? I think that, that we have pretty much reached peak oil now. Now, many indications, including the JOE report, uh, others are indicating potentially two to five years we could reach where we'll have diminishing supply, and obviously with the China and other countries needing more oil, we'll have a serious problem, a very serious problem, especially with the United States being the biggest consumer in the world. We appreciate you in the Congress being probably the, the lone voice of really talking about it. Do you see an opportunity here? Do you see a chance where our politicians at the highest level could come face the United States and just say, look, this is what the problem is, and then, then we'll look for solutions. At the moment, we see very few voices talking about it. Do you see that happen anytime soon? It would be nice if that happened. You know, we're kind of focused on the here and now. We aren't much uh, focused on the future. We have elections every two years in the House. That's a primary focus every six years in the Senate. The business people have a quarterly report every quarter, so they're focused on that. Somebody in our country has to be looking down the road. I'm not sure who that is, but it's not many of those in the Congress and not many of those in the business world because of the necessity in Congress to get yourself reelected and the necessity in the business world to look good at the next quarterly report so that people keep investing in your company. Well, I appreciate your frank and direct talk because, as you know, most politicians, unless they have the answer to a problem, they don't state the problem. So you, you're talking about it on the camera and also you're talking about it on the Congress floor. This is what Americans need to hear. They need to face data, actual data and reality. And, and besides you, I've seen Dr. Schlossinger uh, and, and recently, he's going to probably talk tomorrow as well, a former uh, CIA director, Secretary of Energy. He's coming out and he wrote the foreword for Dr. Robert Hirsch's book is coming out. It is, it, is this good enough? I mean, do you feel like we could now get the attention of the rest of the country where we really think of in terms of solution for a real problem at this moment? It would be nice if that happened. What I really think will be the reality is that we're going to have to have a crisis before we really get the attention of most of the people. Um, uh, they just are focused on other things. They're losing their jobs. Uh, you know, they're very frightened about the future, and you know, they just don't want to think about this. And you're right. What it requires is, is, is uh, leadership. And I see it as a, as a challenge, as an opportunity to be creative. Uh, most people see it as a problem, something they'd like to avoid. And when you present it as a challenge, as something exciting, gee, you know, uh, there's no exhilaration like the exhilaration of meeting and overcoming a big obstacle. And this is a huge challenge. And so it ought to be very exhilarating facing this challenge, you know. Uh, these fossil fuels are finite. How will we make do without them? And you can be very creative, and, and, and still there, still there's a big, big challenge there. I just see this as something that ought to be that, that, that ought to be a very positive thing for our people, not a negative thing, because there are huge challenges in our country now, which, which, which manufactures and exports very little. We are a very creative and innovative people. We could be leading the world in green technology, in alternative energy technology. And I think, you know, when our leadership finally sees, hey, there's a real opportunity there, isn't there? 
that then I think will be about that. But I'm not sure that that will happen minus a major crisis. Let's hope that it's a crisis, that it's a, that it's a teachable moment, that we have an opportunity to, to recover from it. I hope that the thing doesn't go on so long that, you know, that, that then the challenge is so huge. The, the deficit is so huge that there's really little we can do about it to avoid the kind of calamity that the world will come to. If its leaders don't recognize this will be a problem and address it now. Most people, again, they hear it from scientists, but when they hear it from elected officials like yourself, that this, there is an issue, there is a problem, and then I, as, as you said, we have enough genius people in our world. As long as we focus on the real problem, we really state the problem. What is the problem? The problem is that we're wholly dependent on foreign oil, that we don't have enough of it, and we have a shortage of oil happening potentially two years or three years down the road. If we can state the problem, then it will become the challenge. It's a good news because for our next generation, our kids and our children's children, they'll appreciate that our generation was proactive, did something. So in, 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 the, in the, the final statement, what would you say to our audience that are listening and watching to you? And, and, and what would you like them to know? What do you think they should do to make this happen, to this awareness of this challenge? Oh, go to your elected officials at every level, because there are things that you do, can do at every level to address this problem. You know, give them information about what the problem is. Then demand that they do something about it. Tell them that, you know, they are the leaders, you're going to hold them accountable. You know, there's a, this is a very real problem. There's no way to avoid the problem, you know, and, and hold them accountable. If, if we did this in large numbers, our elected officials would pay attention to it. If we get 100 calls in our office, we represent 660,000 people. Yes. If we get 100 calls, just 100 calls on one subject, that's an avalanche of calls. And boy, we really pay attention. We get that yes. many calls. So, you know, you can make a difference. Just go to your elected officials at every level because there's something that we can do at every level and, and, and remind them that this is a problem. Give them the information so that they can uh, understand what the problem is and then demand that they do something about it and hold them uh, accountable. If you don't do something about it, I'm going to vote for somebody else the next time. Yes. Congressman Borla, thank you very much for your time. Okay, happy to. Thank, thank you. you.